Big Shot Bowling is brought to you by Duddy Ford, Route 9, Westboro. From economy to luxury, you'll find it at Duddy Ford. By Diamond Chevrolet, 520 Park Avenue in Worcester, where you always get a diamond of a deal. Big Shot Bowling is brought to you in conjunction with the World Kennelfin Bowlers Congress. Hi, everybody. I'm Bob Foraker, along with Dan Murphy here on Big Shot Bowling. And as always, we're excited to bring you two excellent keglers. We have Steve Vadney, our defending champ from Claremont, New Hampshire, and he's taking on from East Weymouth, Massachusetts, Barry Lang. And Dan, what about these two hot shots? Well, uh, other than being the, one of the two of the finest gentlemen we have on the tour, they're also excellent Canopin bowlers, WCBC Pro bowlers, both uh, well over 120 average. Uh, they both have uh, an individual high single of over 190. So the numbers are there. It's just a matter of the lights and everything else has any bearing on the, on the scores, but I look for a high scoring match. Let's take a close-up on each guy. First of all, the challenger, Barry Lang. What can you tell us about Barry? Well, Barry, as we said, is from East Weymouth, Massachusetts. Carries an individual high single of 193, 485 for his high three triple, and uh, average of 122. And Barry will be taking on from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney, and Steve was hot last week. He sure was. I uh, ended up beating Jackie Ray 393 to 372. Uh, had a big lead, too, going into that last game, and Jackie Ray threw 160 at him to close it. It uh, wasn't as quite as close as the score indicated, but uh, he's got a tough opponent in, uh, in Barry Lang this week, so uh, it's, uh, forget last week. It's another week and uh, another three-string match. So it's Steve Adney against Barry Lang. The winner will be picking up a couple of hundred bucks, the runner-up 100, and the winner gets the big shot of the show. All he'll have to do is knock down two pins, the seven and the ten, with one ball, and if he does just that, he'll win himself a brand spanking new Thunderbird, compliments of Duddy Ford. We'll be back with string number one, but before we do, let's roll away for these messages. Bob Foraker with Dan Murphy on Big Shot Bowling, and to lift it off is challenger Barry Lang. First appearance for Barry on Big Shot Bowling. And he uses a very unique approach. Yeah, he really turns the ball over inside out, breaks from left to right. Kind of sneaks up on those pins. <laughs> oh, nice try for the spear by Barry from East Weymouth, Massachusetts, with an average of a 122. And he shaves it over for a 10. Barry Lang taking on Steve Vadney. Three strings. Steve looking for his second win in a row. Last week, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, defeated Jackie Ray, 393 to 372. Uh, good break there for Barry, missing a head pin to the left, but leaving the one and a three. Barry looking for his first mark. He'll try to run over the one and the three. Just slid by to the right. The winner will be picking up a couple of hundred bucks and a shot at the Thunderbird. And back-to-back -back tens for the challenger. Barry Lang, after a couple here in the opening game of this match, showcasing Lang and the man you're looking at, the champ, Steve Vadney from Claremont, New Hampshire. And he brings them all over, but the five. The old king, kingpin left standing. Good ball by Steve. Throws a very similar ball. Backs up a little bit from left to right. First mark of the game. Vadney picking up the spare as he moves over to lane number 30. Last week, en route to his win over Jack Ray, he had himself three strikes and 11 spares. Two full, one, five, and nine for a three fill. He works it on the right side. Now he's going to go over and try to chase down the two, four, seven, and eight. And that he does. Vadney getting the spear. Let's go back and watch that shot again. 
tuck pin is the eight pin in the back, the sleeper. Very he well put done. it to sleep that time. <laughs> Very well done. And a three string lead for Steve. The big five lead for East Weymouth, Barry Lang. Trying to split the two and the four. He's been rolling candle pins for three decades. The father of two. He's been on the tour for nine years. And he'll settle for an eight count and a 28 after a three. We asked uh, Barry that information before the, the match, and he couldn't <laughs> remember if it was nine or 10. Well, Barry and all Barry's friends, uh, we found out you've been on the Pro Tour for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Zernike uh, supplied us with that information on all the bowlers, and appreciate that. Keep all the bowlers straight. Let them know what year it is and how many years they bowled on the tour. And <laughs> oh, nice try. Barry. Flipping it from right to left, missing the seven for what would have been a spare. What's three or four years? Ah, that's right, among friends. And a 10 count. 38 after four on the score sheet for the challenger, Barry Lang. Here's the champ. He lifted off with a spare three and then a 10. And oh. there's a strike, a backdoor strike off the bowling of Steve Vadney. The one-two pocket and the six pin kick back into the three pin for the last two pins to go down. A little heavy on the head pin. Nice sidewall action there to remove the six and then the three. Looking for the double. Leaving the five and the eight. If a guy gets a triple, he'll win himself a trip for two to Atlantic City. Compliments of Fresh Pond Travel. They're located in Natick, Massachusetts. And spare spare that one up, baby. Spare on strike for Steve Vadney. So Vadney in the driver's seat. He's up by 15 in the first of three. Very going the left side. Wants that five pin to go. And, and here it, it goes. <laughs> it was a rocking. Captain P.J. would say, happy rocking. Down it went. Is that what P.J. says? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, he's got to hurry. And he's having a little trouble with a break on the ball. That time, uh, put a little more speed on it and it straightened right out for him. Didn't come back to the right for the six and the 10. And a nine count for Lang. Lang, as you saw a few moments ago, carries an average of a 122. His best high, a 193, and his best triple, a 485. There's a drop of seven. The three, six, and the seven. That's what Barry Lang is confronted with. Trying to split the three and the six. Wants to catch a little bit of that wood next to the three, too. Oh, the ball went over and got that seven. Nice shot by he Barry. He did it. Grabbing a mark. There's the first spare as we watch it on replay. First mark's always the toughest. And now Steve Vadney leading by 15. And off target and punching out. Half Worcester. You got it. The two and the eight. Half Worcester on the left. Well, there's the double tandem down there, the 4-7, and off to the right, the 6-10, with a little bit of lumber. And an eight frame for the champ. His average of 129. And he's gonna try to tip over the 1-3 and the 10. 10. He's got to be on that head pin. Head pin is the object pin. The wood should help him clear the 10 that's sitting behind that three pin. Now he's just the object, which would be the head pin. That cost him what would have been his third spare, and this the first string. Score at a 10 for Steve Vadney. Well, the deficit is 16 pence, which is not very bad considering, considering uh, 
Steve has had the two spares and a strike. Of course, the three fill, the two fill, and the two spares didn't help as much as uh, he would have liked. And Lang loads up with a half dozen on his spare. The one, two, seven, and ten. It's makeable. Ideally, he wants to split the one and the two. Got to hurry. Missed the object. Had to get a piece of that one, as you all know. Right now, he's uh, struggling just a bit, trying to fight to find the right combination of angle and speed on the ball. And an eight. So after seven, it's a 71 for Barry Lang. Over the years, Barry has picked up one win on the tour. Been in contention many, many times, though. He's one of our excellent uh, veteran bowlers on the WCBC Pro Tour. And as I mentioned, one of the finer gentlemen we have, too. Oh, no. Tough one. Had the rolling wood, but out about an eighth of an inch too much. Or was it a sixteenth of an inch, Dan? Or four acres? <laughs> <laughs> Away. Well, he blew that one away for a 10. And an 81 with two remaining for Lang in the first game. And for Vadney, he leads it by 10 as he moves into his seventh frame. And he blows them all down for his second strike. No doubt about that one. He crossed over this time. Well, cross over to him because his ball backs from left to right, breaks from left to right. Hits the one three pocket this time. Four, seven, eight, the last three to go. There's just no way they were going to stand up. Looking for the double and an increase in his lead. No. That one went off to the right. Grabbed the three and a few others. Oh, nice oh, try nice. for the spare. Great out by the champ, Steve Badney. Steve, the father of two. And he'll settle for a 10, a 102. So we're down to the final two frames in the first game for each guy. Big five leave for Barry Lang. Besides bowling, Barry enjoys golf and skiing. And a nine. There is going to be quite a bit under his average his first game. His average of 122, and he's chugging along at a 90, hoping to hit the century mark. He'd love to strike out. Yeah, that's a good ball. Both bowlers are floating around with getting into that real good groove. Be a bit surprised to see both of them throw four or five marks in a row the second or the third game. Ooh, he gets it for the spare. A spare number two for Barry Lang. He has a 100 plus a ball going. Big fill here, and if Steve doesn't mark the last two, he's going to be within a mark, which is, uh, I think he's going to be very fortunate because Steve has two strikes, two spares up, but still only rolling at 122 clip. Again, he misses that object pin, but he's going to get a few more. Seven. So a 107 in the first game for the challenger, Barry Lang. And of course, the winner of this string will have the problem shot. And it looks like the problem shot will be presented to the guy you're looking at on lane number 29, Steve Vadney. And Danny, what's he going to have for a problem shot? Well, he's going to have to miss the head pin to the left. He didn't miss it that time. No. He gets his third strike. He's going to have to miss the head pin to the left and leave the four horsemen standing to the right, one, three, six, and ten, as we show the replay of that strike. Again, carbon copy of the last one, one, three pocket. The only difference is the five is the last one to go. Ooh, went for the double, no go. The four standing down on the pin plate. Solid nine pin drop, looking for spare on strike and 
a big lead. And he gets the spare on the strike. He now has a half dozen marks, and this is the first game. He's divided them. Three strikes, three spares. 132 plus one ball working for him. 25 pin lead plus this fill. And he fills it with eight. A nice game for Steve Badney, the champ from Claremont. That's Claremont, New Hampshire. A 140 to Langs 107. We'll be back in. Having the problem shot will be the champ, and then we'll unfold game number two. Okay, Steve has to throw one ball, leave four pins standing. The one, three, six, and the ten, and... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He smiles. <laughs> he asked me before he shot these. Now, Dan, how would you go about playing this? I said, well, you got to miss the head pin to the left. That's all the, the help I can give you. Well, he did. <laughs> Not quite that far left. <laughs> and he left the four horsemen. He would have won himself an Amagil. Compliments of Six Gun Productions and Johnny Ligums. That's not John E. That was Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> Now we're bowling for real. And a spare as Steve lifts off the second string. He now has four spares along with three strikes. Comes into this string leading by 33. And a seven fill. Looking for the spare. Ooh, climbed up there, Dan. What happened? Left the 10 pin standing. <laughs> <laughs> Did he ever? Cut the head pin a little heavy, and that 3 pin went right to the sidewall and never carried that 7. I've uh, carried that 10. 27 after 2 in the second, and here is Barry Lang. High triple of a 485. Not too shabby, 485. And he drops over a half dozen. 3610 with the 8 pin in the back. Piece of wood out in front. Looks to me like he's going to drive the ball right straight through the 3 and the 6. Looks good. Oh, oh boy. Couldn't quite make contact on the 10. And it cost him a spare. Barry in the first string had a 107. And the champ. Badney, a 140, and he'll settle it up with a nine. In the first frame of the second game. Bob, every once in a while we get letters from people across the country, of course with satellite dishes and all the technology we have today, people can pick up New England Sports Network, other cable systems. There's a strike for Barry. The first strike coming I'll get in back the to that. second frame of the second game. Let's watch it again. One three pocket, trips that four pin. As I started to say, um, in many of the cable systems throughout the country, uh, carry up, carry different sports uh, stations, the New England Sports Network being one of them, and the Phoenix Sports Programming Network carries New England Sports Network. And we've received a letter from Don Brialt, I guess, B-R-E-A-U-L-T, in Phoenix, Arizona, and he says he's got two relatives, and, uh, where is it now? Right out my part of the country in Massachusetts. Where, Massachusetts? W-A-R-E? Where? <laughs> where? Re Rita and Urban Brialt, West Warren, do their bowling in and around Springfield, and he had a chance to try this great can canopin bowling in Ware, Massachusetts, and loved it. So anyone wants to uh, travel out to Phoenix, Arizona, and build himself a canopin bowling house, they'd love to have one. And we salute those people and keep on watching. The Valley of the Sun, Maricopa County, Phoenix, Arizona. Dan, I went to school down in that neck of the woods, down in Tempe. I was a Sun Devil at Arizona State University. And was I ever? How long were you there? <laughs> About an hour. <laughs> Here's Barry Lang on lane number 29. 
looking for a double. No. He's, he's still having trouble. He lofted that ball out in the lane a little further, maybe trying to cut down on his break a little bit. If not, maybe his timing is, he's having trouble. A little full, broke back sharp at the end to the right. And Barry's struggling just a bit. He's trailing down by 34 in the match. And he'll settle up with an eight. A disappointing eight for Barry Lang. Lang so far with a strike and a couple of spares in this match. First time ever here on Big Shot Bowling. But uh, mark my words, it won't be the last. Oh, good break there. The four and the seven. Got some lumber down there. And I think Tony Zernike will have to get on and do some uh, lumber work. There's the secretary of the WCBC eyeballing the rolling wood. He'll have to wait till it comes to a standstill before he can clean it out. Tony also works as our official here on Big Shot Bowling. The rule is that the wood has to come to a complete stop because it could roll back into play. <laughs> it looks like he wants to do that. It's laughing at Tony saying, oh, don't touch me. <laughs> there's Tony. Not until I stop. Still. And there's a line down there. 24 inches from the plate, pin plate. Any part of the pin that touches that has to be removed. Only in candlepin bowling do you have that. The right. great sport of candlepin bowling. Fun for all ages. Barry looking to cover the four and the seven. Got it. Good spare for Barry. He now has one strike and one spare in this string. Overall, he has three spares and a strike in the match. Barry Lang trailing the man you're looking at from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. Steve tipping over seven. Interesting leave. You said it. <laughs> more interesting for Steve down there, I think. <laughs> Two, nine, and ten. Well, he elected to go left on the wood. I think I would have went right at that two pin. Hopefully it would come off the left side wall and over towards the nine and the ten, but probably both would have ended up with a nine box. <laughs> 56 at the midway point here in the second string for Badney. Well, Steve's off the head pin a little bit. If you remember last week's match with Jackie Ray. Do I ever remember well, that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, other than the, uh, our guest appearances. But uh, Steve Perry covers the one and the three. Had a tremendous lead after two two games. And didn't throw a real bad game last. Well, he, yes, he did. He had 104. Jackie drew 160. So uh, has a tendency to kind of lay back sometimes. These bowls, you once you get them down, don't let them back into the match. As I said, Barry with another strike. Strike on spare. Looking for the double. There it is again. Backspin right in the 1-3 pocket. Kingpin trip for the strike. Seven, eight pin lead in this game. Plus his fill. He's going to handle the four horsemen plus the nine here. Half the house on that ball. As I started to say, these bowlers are very, very explosive. They're able to look like they're struggling and all of a sudden find their mark. So, as what is the Satchel Page used to say, don't look over your shoulder. Someone may be chasing you or somebody may be catching you or. That he did. Someone's looking like over that. your shoulder. And then of course, uh, oh, Yogi baby said it ain't over till it's over. And we're going to take a commercial break right now before we come back for the final four in this, the second game. To pick up the action here is Steve Adney, and he'll be filling in on a spare. And he fills it with six. Six, six and a half. Six. <laughs> it's going to stay six. And it looks like a good spare leave here. He just drives that pin straight back. It's in front of the two. Oh, he's going left. And it Ooh. cost him. 
No, he wanted to go right at the two and the four and drive the pin straight back. And he went left and snapped it to the left side wall and came back across, missing the four and the eight. And he'll settle up with a nine. He is trailing in this string by seven. And in the match, he's now leading it by 26. Off target on that one. Well, he's been off target with that first ball uh, most of this game. Comes and goes. Neither bowler's brought his best bowling with him today, I can see. But Both bowlers will walk out of here with trophies from George Gurton Trophy Center, located in Worcester, Massachusetts. 91 with two remaining for Vadney here in the second string. Here's the challenger from East Weymouth, Massachusetts, Barry Lang. Well, Barry's finding the range. Oh, yes. Gets the five. Now he'll have to get on and tip over the ten for a spear. He qualified for this show with a roll-off of a 664. That's for five games. Hang on. Ooh! Flip the wood in front first. And he gets it. Spare number four in the match for Barry. In this string, he has a couple of strikes and a couple of spares. Loads it up with a strike. Strike on the spare for Barry Lang. Barry heating it up here in the second game. Uh, Steve, big flaw in his delivery that time, and he probably felt awkward. Actually, almost threw that ball sidearm. That's better. He get the ball out in front of him. It's funny how the momentum swings back and forth, and I, you know, inadvertently before I said that bowlers haven't brought their best bowling with them, and Steve Vadney threw 140. Now, I'm not saying that's bad game. Uh, all I'm saying is that with the number of marks he had, and I think Steve will agree, that that 140 could easily been 165. And now Barry's making me eat my words because he's got 198 plus. But <laughs> these bowls can come around at any minute. There. Yes, Take there that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's strike number four for Vadney as we watch it unfold again. And Vadney shams it. Jams it right down Danny Boy's mouth. Right. <laughs> Get some. Here we go. up this match a little bit. Just say that Dan brought their best bowler for them, and all they do is throw strikes and spares at you. So. Four six. Steve, we got grab nine out of this for a fill on the strike. And 119 game. A 119 coupled with a 140. And a two-string count of a 259. Here's the challenger. Got to hurry with that one. Now, it's interesting. The ball, oh my. the ball will not, he's got so much spin. The ball breaks from left to right, as I mentioned before. The ball won't start to break until it comes in contact with that lane. So if he lofts the ball out a little further in the lane, it's going to cut down in his break. And that's what happened that time. He left it out to the left. And again. That young lady you see down there keeping score is not Cheryl Young. It's Steve Vadney's daughter. And that's Steve's son there, making sure she's adding right. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, his daughter said to me before the match, uh, is that crazy guy going to be here today? <laughs> Captain <Kept> VJ. <laughs> I don't know if she was talking about our director or about the good old captain. Good ball there by Barry. Well, Barry's going to win this game. In fact, he's already won this game. And his problem shot is kind of unique. He's going to have to throw a strike. Simple as that. Yeah. And he's not going to be able to use it in the third game if he does throw it. He wants to cover the four for a spare, and he does. Spare number five now in the match in this string. Barry has three strikes and three spares. And he's quietly climbing back into the match after being down by 33 after the first game. Well, he has a 134 plus 
This ball right here. Oh, yes. That's the what he's strike. That's what he's going to have to do is his problem shot as well. Oh, a nice, nice game for Barry Lang coming back with a 144 after a 107, and he now only trails it by eight. So here we go. We're getting down to the nitty-gritty as we'll be rolling into the final game right after we pause for these commercials. Okay, problem shot, as I mentioned. Just knock them all down. One ball. For an Amagia. Compliments of Six Gun Productions. Uh, didn't want to waste that strike. Now he'll start the third game on lane 29. And we're back to eight pins. A 259 for Vadme after two, and a 251 for Barry Lang. Dropping a half dozen. One three, uh, one six ten with the eight. Head pin, object pin. Wood should help him a little bit with the six and a ten. Problem could be that eight pin. Oh. Ooh. He went totally off course on that one. He was, was totally on track on that one. It's a matter of who gets the, gets the line now. Who, who is able to get into that groove the quickest in this third game will be our eventual winner. Both bowlers seem to fall asleep. Barry, the first game, came back with a great game. Steve started out with a 140, came back with a 119. Oh, There's yes. Strike. Just one box too, uh, too late for the Amagift, but... He'll take the strike in the match, I'm sure. Yeah, one he sandwiched the strike and then another strike. And for the Amagif, compliments of John Liggums, he uh, came up empty-handed. And here's the champ lifting off the final game. And he knocks over five. Strange. Strange leave there. Two, four, five, eight, and nine. Steve really, I've see, seen Steve bowl so many times, bowled against him a few times. He really looks like he's struggling right now. He's really losing his balance at the line when he released that ball. Didn't he uh, nip you for the state title uh, here in New Hampshire a couple of years ago? A few years ago, yes he did. It was quite a match. Oh. I'll buy about 3,000 pins he nipped. No, no, no. <laughs> you got too many zeros there. <laughs> One was enough, but One I think was it was about 30. But he pulled amazing 15, 15, 20, I think, 15, 30 for 10 games. Oh, boy. He's waiting for one of his balls to return. And there it comes back. And the 10 for the champ from Claremont, New Hampshire. And we get a close one going because Lang can grab the lead. All right now, Steve, it doesn't seem like he's squaring his shoulders up to that foul line on, on his release, and he's almost throwing the ball sidearm. Barry was going after the double. Three, six, ten with a four. Going to try to split the three and the six. Needs two of these for a tie game. That's what we got. No, I think we, no, he left one pin stand. That's one pin. Barry's down by one. He can nod it all up at this juncture if he tips over one of the two down there. And an eight and a 35 after three for the challenger. Barry Lang. Uses a very short approach. Uh, sneaks up on him. Off to the right. One, two, and ten. So far, Barry has ten marks. Five and five. Five strikes, five spares. Vadnay with nine marks. Four strikes and five spares. Oh! 
in between. Almost split the one, two, and then he, I thought he was going to clip it on the inside, have the ball carry the 10. But he was a little heavy on the head pin to do that. Result, 10 pin stays standing, covers it for the 10. And two open frames for Steve Vadney. So Steve, as he moves into the third, is opposite an eight count. And when he goes into the fourth, he's opposite a 10. Leading by one, box is completed. Trailing by seven in this game, but leading, as Dan just pointed out, by a slim pin in the match. Very nearly pulled that one off. Well, he can gain one in count, two in count if he gets them all, but I think he's going to end up with a nine. He does. Two pins. Two pins separating these two guys in the final string of this match. Well, the winner will be grabbing a couple of hundred bucks and a shot at the Thunderbird compliments of Duddy Ford in Westboro, Massachusetts. Again, low fall. It's a tough one. Uh, Got to play the wood in front of the six and ten and pray. Yeah, I well, tape early today. Maybe I uh, probably went to church last night. <laughs> Well, back to one pin. Time for sweaty palms and nail biting and knee knocking, <laughs> seat squirming. Barry looks relatively calm. Loud. Well, However, calm. that ball stuck in the palm of his hand. Now well, shakes his head. Good looking ball, but lofted the ball out. That's what we have Tony Zernike out there for. And there he is, Mr. C. Put a star next to the first ball in the fifth frame. Let's see if it has any effect on Barry. None whatsoever. Almost Comes right up back in the groove. Barry with an average of a 122. A computer operator for the postal service. Ooh, he didn't want that one. An eight count. 53 after five, four lang. Let's check in on that lob again. Okay, you see the red line. The ball must come in contact. Part of the lane before it passes that. Oh, oh yeah, clearly. you can see. Yeah. Light hit, got a good break when that 10 went down, wants the wood to turn down, it does. Got a shot here. Watch out for the eight pin though. Another piece of wood in front of the seven should help. Driving it straight back. Yes. Big mark, big mark oh, for Barry yes. in the sixth. Here it is again, a key one as Dan pointed out. He now has recorded five strikes and six spares in this match. Most bowlers, are, our rookies, our first time viewers, or it's the first time on any bowling show on television, a lob really would shake him up. Barry, no problem, came right back with another mark. Boy, Steve's <laughs> make that spare. <laughs> Four pin with a six, nine, and ten. Gonna play the wood in front of the six and the ten. Come off. Whoa, got the problem, with, which was a <laughs> four pin. I figured he'd carry that ten. Didn't quite unfold the way he wanted it. A little bit of lady luck involved. You gotta be good, and you gotta be lucky. And a ten count, 48 after five. Now. Badney is opposite a spare, rolled by Lang in the sixth. Increases lead to three pins, box is completed, but now he's opposite a mark by Barry. Oh boy. Oh baby, the spread eagle. Birdie time. Two, four, seven on the left, three, six, ten on the right. A number of years I've been around this game, you, you think you've seen it all, you, and it's just strange how things can come and go. Steve. Uh, Moving right along there, that first game, second game, I detected that he struggled a little bit. The third game, he's just not carrying the extra pin, coming in full. Got to make that adjustment. And we're going to uh, take a timeout for a commercial break as we got a good one brewing here on Big Shot Bowling. We'll be back with more, but first, let's roll away for these messages.
Corey Lang trailing it by three, but he can take the lead. He's filling in on a spear. And here he goes. I think he's up by one ball. Plus that with uh, with a six box that Steve had in the sixth box. Eight pins. He was up by one, I believe. And I was going back to the fifth frame, and you are oh, correct. I see. Okay. I was reading my statistician's score. Got to hurry. Oh, boy. Tough one. And a big miss. Steve Vadney, sigh of relief there. He had a key hit and a key miss. And again, the key now is to keep it in the double figures. And uh, he has a 10-pin lead. Box is completed through the sixth frame. Big drop of a nine on that fill, but then he just blew by to the left side. Now is to give Steve another mark to think about. And it's going to be a good one. Well, like, oh boy, had a break and then lost it. I think. Now well, it's got a mess now. <laughs> <laughs> Three, six, nine, and ten on the left with a seven pin. Well, he's got a good angle there in, into the three pin. I think he may play the wood to the left. Have the ball carry him into the cluster of four and have the wood go and get the seven. That's what he's trying. Oh. Nice try by against the Challenger. side wall, in front of the seven. Came back across in front of the seven a second time, and never touched it. Barry with the lead by ten, yeah. and he has a full house on that box. Ten pins. Wow, that's the lead. Here we go. Through six frames, he's opposite 19. That Barry Lang has put up a nine and a ten. The challenger next week will be Reggie Deline from Needham, Massachusetts. Ooh, tough one. Now Steve is really flustered right now. Just a little flaw in the approach. He's just not squaring up. Digging out of it. And he'll try to negotiate the four and the seven for a ten count. Chance to pick up one on count here. No, he doesn't. Lead still ten. So Vadney, the champ, who last week had a win over Jack Ray with a 393 to a 372 for Ray, is in some trouble. And his ball has been off target on the left side. Uh, the, the name of the game here is the, that first ball. Steve has not been on the head pin. 136, he's got a legitimate spare leave here. Let's see what happens. No. It's a little light on the head pin. Went right around and took the six and forgot to negotiate the three. And the ten, and we're down to the final two, showcasing Barry Lang and the champ, Steve Vadney. All right, as it stands right now, a ten-pin lead means your, your opponent has to double mark. So as it stands now, Steve would have to throw two marks to beat Barry, assuming Barry would get two tens. Barry wants to put another mark up there and really make things tough. And he's in good shape for one because he's eyeballing the two and the four. Well, he's in good shape. If he plays the two pin to the right, I think if he splits them, that wood in between is going to cost him that four pin. Well, he's going to go left anyways. And Too far it. on the left side. Oh, boy. Right down to the last few frames. What a match. It's the way we like it here on Big Shot Bowling. Yeah, it makes things exciting. All the bowlers that appear here are members of the World Candlepin Bowlers Congress. So this is the last call for the challenger from East Weymouth, Massachusetts. Barry Lang had a game of a 107, then he soared up to a 144. Now he's hoping to get the triangle for a spare. Very similar to the shot he just had. He had the 2-4 on lane 29. Now he's at the 2-4 with the kingpin, the 5. Triangle to the left. Big, big mark. And here he goes, Barry Lang. Looks good. Looks yes. good. Clutch yes. spare. Bear number seven along with five strikes for Barry Lang. Okay, this is going to make Steve get two real big marks now. He could have done it with the two small ones or a strike and a spare. Now he's going to have to have two big marks depending on the fill that Barry has on this spare. 111 plus this one. And he Ooh, fills eight. it with an eight. And a 119 for Barry Lang in the final game. Okay, he collected 28 pins. The last two frames, he was ahead by 10, so that means Steve Vadney must get 38 pins the last two frames to tie, 39 to win. A total of a 370 for Lang, the challenger, and there is a strike. 
Not over till it's over. <laughs> Get that right. Strike number five now for the champ. And here it unfolds again, the one three pocket. Okay. Rocket pocket. Needs a big fill and another mark. Of course, a double would be great. Wow. Oh, baby. Look at that well, five rocking. It's makeable. Two, five, and seven. It's got a piece of wood behind that, too. That may affect the two pin going into that seven. Here he goes, Snap Steve Zadney. Yes! Oh, what a big one. What a superlative shot for the spare, for the champ. Let's okay. watch it again. Here it comes. Yes! Let's, let's set it up. He's got 30 pins now. He needs eight to tie. If my math is right, nine to win. No. Maybe. I think it's one pin. Oh, Barry Lang's baby. favor. What a match. What a match indeed. A 110 and a 369. Oh. So Barry Lang, the challenger, sneaks it out by one pin over the champ, Steve Vadney. A 370 to a 369. We'll be back with the wrap of the show, and Barry Lang will have the big shot as he'll be going after Thunderbird. Thank you.